Welcome to the Dice Tower Daily Chat. I'm your host, Roy Candy, and with me today, I have Hunter and Matt from the Space Cats Peace Turtles podcast. What's going on, guys? Hey, what Hi. up? How are you? Yo. I'm if great. <laughs> if there's people out there that don't know what Space Cats Peace Turtles is, which how could you not? I mean, obviously, Twilight Imperium 4, like, deep dive into the game. Mm -hmm. What do you guys do? <laughs> so, so we... Go ahead, we Hunter. wanted you to just make a show where we just talk about one game, and that's the only. And we just talk about one game, and that's it. Because we were like, "What's like kind of like a budget way to start a board <laughs> game podcast?" And we're like, "Well, we already have Twilight Imperium. What if we just talk about that?" And then, and then Matt was like, "What do you want to talk about in episode two? I was like, "I just feel like we could maybe just keep going with again. this." Yeah, it'd be nice to just keep that up. Yeah, yeah you guys actually talk started talking about Twilight Imperium four. Before Twilight Imperium 4 was even out. Yeah, That's so true. they did the announcement. Um, it was, like, announced. And we were, like, we were already, like, oh, we we're going to do content. We're people that mm -hmm. want to try to do some sort of content. We had, like, weird different ideas. And then uh, the stuff, like, the rule book was released ahead of time. And we were just kind of, like, obsessing over it. Uh, mm -hmm. And we sat down one day, and I just told Hunter about everything I had read that day. And he was, like, Matt, why didn't we just record that? <laughs> and just then make that a thing. <laughs> and so then we were like, okay, well, let's redo it and have the whole conversation. And then we just kind of kept doing it every single week for two and a half years. <laughs> right. <laughs> it still has the same structure, too, because I'm pretty forgetful. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I'm not good with rules. I'm not good at... And Twilight Imperium has, like, too many rules and there's so much to it. Uh, that basically it is Matt telling me about the same game and reminding me of it every <laughs> single week so that I can just keep how to up. Play every week. <laughs> it's great. Matt really needed somebody to play with, so he's like, yep. Hunter, you're it. Just desperate. You're my me. only friend. Stay stay with me, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I remember, I remember back when Twilight Imperium 4 first came out. Actually, it was kind of like leaked before they actually officially announced it. Yeah, there was like a week or two ahead of which, Gen which, Con. Which was kind of crazy because I remember – being at work, and I was working in, like, distribution at the time. Like, I was r riding around on a lift, and somebody added me on Twitter because, like, they knew I liked Twilight Imperium. They were like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> I went to the, the Fantasy Flight website, and it glitched. Look, what is this? And I'm like, that yeah. kind of looks like Twilight Imperium, but the art's <laughs> different. It's kind of weird. And uh, I, I texted it to Sam, and Sam's like, ah, oh, it's fake. That's fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way they wouldn't dare. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, like, literally, like, a week later, we got a chance to play it. Um, at at like uh, one of the guys from Fantasy Flight let us play a game. We played didn't play a whole game, you know, because at, at Gen Con they're not really gonna let you play a full game. But uh, we played like a few rounds of it, and man, I I love it. Yeah, it's it's my favorite board game. Turns out, <laughs> good news. <laughs> I like it just fine. Um, how many how many games do you feel like you've played just in total? This is a fun question. I feel like for TI players. Yeah. Oh man. You mean, are we talking just four or four and three? Let's say just four, actually. I think it's more, it's spicier if I say just four. I, this is going to be like put me to shame compared to you guys because there's no way. Well, of course. I can, no, I can no, be yeah, even no close. Way. It's our job. So. I think I've played it <laughs> like six times six or so. Times. But I played, I, I played, I played three a, a lot more too. Right. So, yeah, yeah, right. Man, that's awesome. I wish I wish I could have just played it six times sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I think about it like that. I'm like, wish it was that raw. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people play this game like once a year, not yeah. once a week. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's a totally a uh, good way to play it. I think I think it makes sense at once right. a year just as much as well it's funny too because you, you make the joke about like oh how much we've played it but then like we know the people in our community that it's like there are people that play three or four times a week mm -hmm. like there's people that they get home they get on mm -hmm. tabletop simulator and they play and play and play. like just every day that's their routine and it's that blows my mind even more there's people with like literally 300 400 mm -hmm. plus games of ti4 it's terrifying <laughs> yeah i so don't understand it how many podcast episodes do you guys have that are specifically about Twilight Imperium 4th Edition? So we're okay. coming up on episode 135, and we did seven Dune episodes and one Root episode. Oh, you only did so one Root subtract episode? Eight. Dang. We were, we've only done one Root episode so far. So last week's episode was our very first Root episode, and we're about to start getting into more. Um, Man, y'all have been teasing so that for a while. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we did do one episode where we just pitched our idea for a Twilight Imperium movie. So does <laughs> what, does that go with the other one? I think that, that counts. That definitely counts as a Twilight Imperium episode. You're talking about yeah, yeah. Twilight Imperium, yeah. so right? So like, yeah, that's true. Okay, that one still counts. It's like just 125 as episodes about exclusively Twilight Imperium, right? <laughs> I know they recently redid a couple of the strategy cards as well. Did you like split those up into two different episodes? <laughs> <laughs> we drag everything. We're, we take it by the word these days. Yeah. So, your. Let's discuss w- your today. <laughs> Next week, space, and then yeah. docs. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, everybody, make sure to leave a bunch of questions down below for us, uh, for these guys. And uh, whether you've played Twilight Imperium or haven't played it before, just uh, feel free to ask whatever sorts of questions you want. Um, And it should be lots of fun. Um, But yeah, so, man, one of the things that people always say about Twilight Imperium is, like, how hard it is for people to get to the table with that time frame. Um, Is there any suggestions that you have for, like, how to approach your group about playing it or how to get to the table or even if you don't have the game how to like find other people to play it with so the biggest thing is that twilight imperium has this awesome advantage of getting to be an event that your friends do so the biggest thing is to build up the hype around it and get like it is don't expect to do it at like your weekly board game night that's Mm -hmm. that's not really kind of obviously where twilight imperium fits in but it's the thing where you like all right You're going to buy the chips. You're going to buy the drinks. I'm buying lunch. Everyone shows up to my house on Saturday at 9 a.m. And we're going to, like, go for it. We're going to go full on. So, like, the biggest thing is just treating it like the epic, huge space opera that it is and and making time to, to feel the impact of the whole game. And not the worst thing new players will do is, like, try to knock out the first game rather than sitting there and appreciating just the whole arc of all of it. So my biggest thing is like, take the time to like research. I mean, that's kind of why we, we have found the following we have is because there are people that don't get to play this game often enough, obviously, but they're thirsty to think about it. And so like giving that opportunity to like research different factions and different strategies and all that stuff, that's the kind of prep work you can do with twilight Imperium and it pays off. Uh, whereas other shorter games it's like why would i like sit there and research for like six hours a game that's then going to last 30 minutes that that can sometimes seem weird to people where it's Mm -hmm. like well i can just play that game 12 times and be fine but twilight (laughs) imperium it's like nah there's prep work there's like stuff i need to do ahead of time to really experience it so so i i think invest as much time as you you can into like taking it on yeah for sure um for me it's like it's crazy because I mean, yes, the game takes a long time to play, and yes, it's sometimes hard to get a game together, but it's one of those games that I I don't ever forget, like, the games that I've had of it. You know, it just sticks in my head, and, like, after I'm done playing, like, I can't even get to sleep at night because I'm too busy, like, thinking about, oh, man, this and that, and this epic thing happened, and remember when they (laughs) all played, like, Assassination on me and exhausted all my planets, and (laughs) I I think it was worse in third against edition what's that like there's a specific agenda that's like public execution or something like yes. that yeah. oh my goodness right i got well, there's so much dirty stuff in third edition third edition is like by the time you get both expansions there's so many action cards that like everything <laughs> still gets to be a surprise to you oh yeah, that yeah it's like even if you know the game backwards and front it's like oh i forgot that card existed because there's 170 cards or whatever and i haven't seen it in two years because i only play once every six months or whatever like it's so hard to retain uh, all that stuff so yes the the surprises are are boundless mm-hmm. boundless boundless hunter <laughs> boundless surprises <laughs> <laughs> these surprises are without bound i need to turn on my light real quick okay <laughs> um robert asks um what are your thoughts on dune versus rex that's so I'll be curious to hear Hunter's thought. Hunter, how many times did you play Rex? Okay, so I didn't play Rex that much. Yeah, I only um, played it like Matt three didn't times. Play a lot either, but no, I not even a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say, um, to me, I feel like Rex in my head is a little more of a specific experience, but mm-hmm. that might be just because I have spent more quality time with Dune yeah. and now kind of know it. I feel like a little better. Um, so in my head, I felt like Rex kind of felt like one person's specific idea of like, this is how Dune should be played right. versus like Dune itself being a little more like, oh, no, go whichever way you want with it, basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we we covered Dune for a little while, and um, the the trickiness of proper Dune was that um, the rules are very much thematics first, uh, mm-hmm. and like the 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 exactness of how things are worded isn't quite there because it's it's meant to be a game that just like your group will f- find out the meta that exists at your table and, and all of that. And and Rex feels like an attempt to try to actually streamline and, and make a twist on it. And mm-hmm. so some of the decisions they made are, you know, I, I think it's pretty widely agreed that people don't necessarily love the map as much in Rex. It's certainly not as thematic. And mm-hmm. I mean, for right. people who are fans of Dune, you're, you're just not going to get that. I mean, thematically, there's no comparison. Re- Dune is better because it was designed to be thematic <laughs> for Dune. Um, right. But I do think Rex has a few things that are streamlined in a way that I really enjoy. Um, it can be quicker. Um, it's something that I enjoy having both of them, to be honest with you. I, I like having both on my shelf because uh, it, it depends on the mood I'm in, which one I'm going to pull out and play with the group. Nice. Yeah, I was I, I was a fan of... Uh, I actually grew up... Like, my dad taught me Dune, like, probably when I was, oh, wow. I don't know, like, 13, because he had wow, the old-school awesome. version of it. Um, but then when Rex came out, I was, like, super excited because I already was a big fan of Twilight Imperium, and it came out, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't have the the Dune IP right. on it, but I was still excited to play it, and I actually taught it to a lot of my friends and played it a bunch of times. Um, but then I went after playing Rex a bunch and going back to Dune, I definitely see what you say where it's like, man, this doesn't the new Dune doesn't feel quite as streamlined <laughs> and right. um right and and i miss the fact that like in rex they kind of took out all of the there's a bunch of like item cards that are just like nothing <laughs> right the worthless <laughs> like cards playing playing yeah playing dune again with the worthless cards it's like oh man it, i mean it makes the atreides um a whole lot better but because right. they get to look at that stuff but it's like man i, yeah. I don't want to well, pay money for a card that does nothing you know. Right, and there's some wild faction imbalance in mm-hmm. Dune, which is part of the fun of. I mean, that a, any imbalance in a game is is meant to mm-hmm. be navigated by the players. That's that right, is right. the fun of it. But if you are looking for that maybe more balanced approach, I do think that's where Rex kind of is a bit better because like mm-hmm. the Benny Gesserit in Dune are just, are like ten light years ahead of a lot of the other factions. Is is, is kind of where what we came away feeling. Um. Earth Fat has a, a, an interesting question here. It's very important. How fast can you run? Okay. Um, okay, hang on. Go. <laughs> three. Or five. I started at three. <laughs> I ran that's, four miles. How fast was oh, it? Oh, wow. That's really fast. Really uh, here, fast. wait. Let, here, let me... Uh, that, was, that took you three hours. So <laughs> it, it was pretty slow, actually. Everyone waited. Um, yeah, no... Uh, Let's see, how do I answer that better? Well, I can tell you how fast I can crawl, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> but running, running's not quite my thing, especially not in these times we're living in. Although, I can run to my door pretty fast, so what does that mean? Gotta pick does up anybody... Grubhub. It's time to go. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I love it. Love that. Did you like that <laughs> joke, Hunter? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so today we had a top 10 uh, list of fantasy flight games. And Ooh. Tom said that uh, it's it's during the, the list, he said it's insane for anybody who says that they can play Twilight Imperium in five or six hours. They're, they're, I, I don't see oh. that happening, blah, blah, blah. And uh, several people in chat disagreed. What, yeah, what do you guys think? Claim, like, how, how, how long does it take you guys to play Twilight Imperium since you guys are, like, the masters at this point? So there's a hilarious arc that happens with twilight imperium which mm-hmm. is like your first i don't know two three four games are yeah wildly long because you're mm-hmm. all messing up rules and you're looking up stuff in the rule book and it takes right. forever it's we can't pretend it but if you have forever. a good teacher there and someone who can if you keep have a great teacher going. it can go much faster they can they uh, it's really great to have someone who is just like doing all the busy work for everybody and and kind of monitoring the the board state uh, but then you can hit a point where your group if you're playing with the same six five whatever people routinely like you will all go through the motions and you can in twilight Imperium, it's really easy to like go over each other's turns mm-hmm. um but then <laughs> when you get really competitive and and like people start playing for keeps like in our tournament games uh when we have tournaments the games go back the other way <laughs> and gotcha. they become way <laughs> wicked long again so uh, an example would be, this is not a selling point I've probably for Twilight <laughs> Imperium, but we played in a 14-point tournament this last weekend. Oh, Four, you can play Twilight Imperium in, in 10 points or 14 points. My game went for 14 and a half 
hours. <laughs> should have been illegal. So that should be illegal. Everyone should but... have been disqualified. You all should have lost. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we've also played four player games that went three and a half hours. Sure. I mean, no yeah, joke. Yeah. When, when it's like the group isn't micromanaging every situation. They're not freaking out about every activation. We're just a casual group that's here to have a fun time. You can fly through actions and, and, yeah. and do build while somebody, you know, finish your build while you go ahead and take your turn. You guys can all kind of step over each other in a really easy way. And it's important to know that in the TI community, there's a lot of shorthand that yeah. happens. So stuff that might take a newer group a long time to get through, like someone playing the trade strategy card. Um, mm -hmm. As people get accustomed to like what is considered normal trades, you can just get through that stuff a lot faster. Yeah, um, so sure. if you're playing with people that know each other well and they know the game really well, yeah, five, six hours is easy, mm -hmm. very easy. And we have a, we've got a lot of video proof, actually. <laughs> I, uh, I I normally play like, f or I've played six, six players, five and a half hours before, mm -hmm. but that was with like four new players. So yeah. Um, I mean, I, really I get, impressive. I'm good at like teaching the game so I can tell yeah, everybody yeah. exactly how things work and I can answer their right. questions quickly, but I don't know that I've ever played a game of Twilight Imperium where there wasn't a decent amount of new players, I guess just because yeah. majority of the time. I mean, that, that's it's... definitely a hard thing to pull. I mean, that's, what's kind of been great about the show mm -hmm. from a selfish standpoint is like, now I have all these <laughs> new people to play with and so they all know how to play the game. So I don't have to teach someone every single time I play, which is absolutely where we were when we started with like, you know, we were only playing with local groups and it was just like uh so and so can't make it looks like we got to find somebody completely new and i'd have to like ask people at my job God, to come, and then you, you know, like con them into it and they yeah. don't know what they're getting into and we have like... a lot of non-gamer friends that we got into <laughs> like twilight imperium was like their first board game <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we roped them in <laughs> um oh, trevor so says sad. twilight imperium star wars thoughts I think I already know you guys' uh, answers on this. Yeah, we actually we <laughs> talked about this at Gen Con uh, with because what Sam Healy is a big proponent of. He would love to see the Star Wars retheme of Twilight Imperium. I'm not. And I'm not there with it. He's dead <laughs> wrong. He's dead wrong. God, this, is, this is some quintessential Matt right here telling somebody <laughs> they're dead wrong that isn't here to defend themselves. <laughs> It's, do you want me to no. call Sam right now? Hey, yeah, Sam, yeah. you're wrong. <laughs> Listen here. Uh, no, I, I don't see it. I mean, first off, there are currently 17 factions. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're telling me you're going to artfully translate every single one of those abilities into some right sort now. of Star Wars I'll faction. I'll do it right yeah, now. Exactly. Okay, Try first me. off, ghosts are Wookiees. Okay, <laughs> all right, ghosts are Gungans. Wookies of Krius. <laughs> Done. Of okay. Which 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 is Gungans? The Gungans Hummerang, because they keep multiplying and you're trying to get rid of them? I'm just kidding. I Gungans like it. are extra because no one wants them at the table. Oh, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> no, Gungans are winning. Have around on Jar Jar now? Isn't yeah, Jar Jar we'll... cool now? Yeah, Isn't Jar Jar that... saved uh, filmmaking. That's a thing. Yeah, I'll talk actually, about that. I could talk about that oh, for no, half an don't, hour. Don't do that. They don't want that. <laughs> but yeah, Jar Jar rules, actually. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, Jar -Jar what else? I've gotten Jar -Jar. tired already. Um, <laughs> droids could be... Hmm. Muat. That works. Sure. <laughs> sure. No, Jabba. <laughs> Everyone gave that one pause. No, Jabba, I think... Muat. Jabba Muat. Done. Jabba Muat. Yeah, now I'm done. I think Fantasy Flight has plenty of Star Wars games, and obviously it would be sacrilegious to give up on their flagship series. There's no yeah. way you'll ever see a TI retheme because TI is their baby. Uh, yeah. So, also the TI is good. I feel like when you suggest that, you are <laughs> right. kind of throwing a little bit of shade at yeah. the Twilight Imperium art, which which we've. If you look at my background, we've done a great parody of all of it here. <laughs> Um, Kabuki Kid asks, expansion, question mark, win, question mark. You guys work at Fancy Flight, right? Yeah, we work at Fancy yeah. Flight. You know? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I don't know, man. There's really great new uh, tech and a strategy card that came out recently. That Dane yeah, that, that was interesting. I was excited that yeah. people at Fancy Flight are actually looking at Twilight Imperium a little bit. Because I know the yeah. last, I think it was the last Gen Con, someone asked, mm. Hey, is there going to be a Twilight Imperium expansion? And they're like, "Oh, we don't currently have one in the works." And we're just like, "What?" Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know these pipelines well, for board games are like two years. Don't say yeah. that they're not currently in the works. Right. Unless they're just we we had us. Dane on the show recently, uh, Dane Beltrami, the designer of Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition. Uh, uh, we were just talking with him about those uh, texts and stuff that he released, and he did say 
that they had more of that kind of stuff planned of like little digital releases right. or something. Right. So oh, cool. who knows about expansion, but there is, I mean, there's like, they, they have stuff in the hopper. They're thinking about Twilight Imperium, right? right. That's at least a thing. So I don't know. Take that. Um, Carlu asked the most important question here. Um, what is the best food for a long game like Twilight Imperium 4? Ooh. Okay. So there's, that's really two questions because there's the best, what is the best take a break, eat a meal food, and there's the best what sits at the table food, right? There's oh, right, snack, right, right. and then snack. there's Twilight Imperium is a uh, game that requires a break to eat. Um, so obviously pizza, you got to have a pizza phase. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty Imperium. sure it's in you the rule your, book, right? The pizza yeah, phase? Yeah, yeah. You have your strategy yeah. phase, your action phase, your agenda phase, and your pizza phase. Right. Um, so that's an obvious answer to that question. Um, but the snacks, it, that's way tougher because you need something that's going to stick around all day and not get old. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Hunter? Oh, that's easy. That's like all snacks. All snacks? Uh, it would be I weird. I mean, if you were like, oh, I want a bowl of olives that's my snack it's like okay. that's probably not good gen con 2019 in the finals there is a player uh, one of the finalists at gen con 2019 oh, yeah. uh whose name is schroeder uh had a bag of raw carrots that he kept pulling up out of nowhere and Giant just raw launching carrots. into so maybe that's the best one just raw carrots man keep it keep it green did and don't the, even uh, Arbrek, munch on the same carrot. Did the Arbrek like, player find that carrots. unsettling? Like, <laughs> they, they were deeply <laughs> offended, and yeah, they took their threat. home system. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, this might be an inside question. I'm not sure. Uh, who is your favorite Twilight Imperium 4 player, and why is it Duke Lukem? Whoa. Okay, so that reference is the winner of our recent Space Cats Peace Turtles tournament. Every year we do this ridiculously huge terrifying tournament it, this year was 216 players Holy and smokes. it took us three and a half months to do all of the games um primarily on weekends lots of amazing help from the community we had moderators uh that were helping run games i mean it, it was like this huge incredible effort by the entire community and the winner of that was someone whose uh, screen name is uh duke lucum a wonderful person from england who has just this this brilliant mind at the game he's a <laughs> He's a compute. What does he do? He like works on robotics. He like he's teaches. A he's he, a he te robo student. He's a robo student. He teaches robots how to love. So <laughs> shout out to Duke Lucum. Um, what is your take on legacy games? Oh, so I don't get to have an informed take. I haven't really played one. I've played like one session of Werewolf Legacy, but people talk about wanting to have a Twilight Imperium Legacy if that could be a thing and that'd be cool i mean i'm down for that and i like the idea of legacy games i kind of only play one board game pretty much <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of then also adding another game that requires a lot of routine play like mm -hmm. oh yeah you're gonna play this like 12 to 24 times or you know whatever they right, equal out right. to that has been notoriously very difficult to do i have a untouched copy of pandemic legacy S season one just still sitting on my shelf waiting for me to make time for it we tried to play it remotely though that was yeah. fun and then tried we gave and up and failed <laughs> <laughs> i've actually you're not the first person to say that like i've heard other people yeah. tell me that they tried to play pandemic legacy remotely and we're just like not working <laughs> yeah right it's too hard to get it get the text on screen for everybody um kabuki kid says how many other 4x style games have you played have you tried space empires 4x haven't done space empires 4x let's see other 4x games we're I'm so weird not, uh, we're just yeah. so such we're strange so weird people. that we only do this one thing we're not <laughs> we are all... it's, it's not even like we're into the genre like when we play other board games yeah. we don't play other games that are we similar play social to deduction Imperium. games like we're yeah super that's what into we like one night ultimate werewolf mm -hmm. and we used to be really into avalon and stuff like that or like camel up we are fiends for camel up right <laughs> but <laughs> but like this game occupies so much of my 4x brain that i very rarely make room for other stuff yeah like if i play another 4x game it's generally gonna be like one playthrough really at all yeah and then probably never again because i got to get back on my on my ti oh, grind I basically yeah <laughs> hunter you in the video game realm hunter will you've dabbled in like total war games and oh yeah i like grand Universal strategy Alice, in general so, yeah, yeah. 
Mm. Oh, and we start, you know, we started on, they're talking about Axis and Allies in the chat a little bit. Yeah. And that's actually where, that was the first game in this kind of genre. Not to say, I don't oh, know, X, is Axis X, and Allies X, 4X? Yes. No. no. <laughs> uh, there's no exploration because it's, right. you've already explored it all because it's the world. Because <laughs> uh, it's history and that's already happened. Uh, but that, yeah, that was like the first game we ever played that was anything like that. And I didn't even, we didn't even play that much together, me and you, it turns out. Um, we thought we did, but we just were in the same circles that played it. Yeah. Nick asks, is is Exfoliate one of the four X's? <laughs> I, 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 you know what? We can have a fifth X. There's room. There's room <laughs> yeah, for a fifth what's X and Exfoliate. X? It's, ex it's Exfoliate. Is that the yeah. best X we could come up X? with for the fifth X? Extreme. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So it's uh. expand, explore, expert <laughs> extreme and uh, existentialism ex girlfriend, <laughs> ex -girlfriend. <laughs> lan asks um so what is your game of choice if you're all in the mood to play twilight imperium but you only have a couple of hours oh that's interesting at my wall. um <laughs> So we're we're hot on root right now. That's yeah, our that's root. our other that's big the, thing. That's the answer. Uh, so that's a that's a quick answer. I also am super duper into uh, Game of Thrones, specifically with the A Feast for Crows expansion, which is Ooh. the four player expansion. Nice. And found that that can play pretty fast if you're. I mean, if the group knows how to play it. So for a while, that was my other. If if I couldn't get six player, this isn't this isn't a. I only have two hours, but a. I only have four players. We don't necessarily love four player TI very much, yeah. personally. Um, but I will Even jump in. I've seen you guys something. do a bunch of like five player maps where you have to do the whole wacky. Yeah, the the, thing. the warp zone. Yeah, I, I'll I'll do five player all day, but but four player just feels weird to me. But I'll do uh, Feast for Crows, Game of Thrones as a four player game, and and those can get knocked out super fast. Yeah, don't play that with Matt. Just for the record, do not play that game with him. <laughs> Because he will he will make you real mad. I play a lot of games with Matt. Obviously, I play a lot of games with this dude, and I can't handle playing Game of Thrones with you, man. It's uh, it brings out a, a dirty dark part of your soul, and it, and it hurts. It hurts me in my life. Okay. So I have a question. Um, do you remember like your first game of Twilight Imperium? My first game. Yes. Yeah was a four player game where I was the uh who's the ones that have like the zero initiative all the time? Is it the Nalu Nalu, Nalu collective? I mm -hmm. played the Nalu and me and another player got to uh to it was this Twilight Imperium three and we got to ten at the same time and because I was the Nalu I was able to win the game and then I was yeah. hooked from there, you know. Um so I remember our first game I got the game. It's it's actually sad that we are <laughs> the people that have this podcast because we didn't start playing until 2013, um, which is actually kind of late in the game for like diehards or whatever. Um, but I I found TI uh, in a random. I used to travel a lot for work, and then I would visit game stores in random areas. And then there was just like <gasps> that game I've heard of a million times, and I wasn't even the one who was like all hot to try it because I was the one who was kind of afraid of Axis and allies. Like it was, it was a bit big for me. I was, I was afraid of the depth of that, but like Hunter and some of our other friends were, were like very anxious to try twilight Imperium and I found it. So I brought it home and the back of the box said plays in like one to two hours or two to four hours, oh, which God. is like the funniest lie that TI three ever told. Uh, and we set it up at like, 10 p.m. thinking we were going to play a game and we just had it like on a coffee table and we were just like I don't know let's try it out let's see how things go and then you know six hours later four hours later it was very very late at night and we were like oh this was completely ill-conceived this was such a right. dumb idea let's, let's try again <laughs> next week with the actual proper amount of time needed to play this game right we even played I think our first game we we begged two of our friends to play with us that had no interest yeah and we knew that they had no interest right. in it so that four hours was a bit of a slog because there were just two people that were just kind of like Checked yeah out. whatever Completely. like yeah. <laughs> yeah you can have my home system that's fine yeah yeah, yeah whatever fine. man get me out of this <laughs> does this end soon <laughs> um what's the best soundtrack when playing Ooh. Ooh, there are so many you can search on almost any 
uh, like app or YouTube or wherever. There are so many mm-hmm. people that have specifically made Twilight Imperium playlists, and the most common stuff is stuff like really good sci-fi video game background music. Mm. Um, I like to put some Hans Zimmer in there. Uh, we obviously, <laughs> uh, we our theme song is by a guy named Ben Prunty, who did the music for the FTL video mm-hmm. game. Oh, yeah. Uh, and all of his music cool. friggin' rules, and I love having that on in the background. Um, so, yeah, just really good, deep sci-fi stuff. Sure. And also David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, just David Bowie. Yeah. Just the Spacey songs. Just the David Bowie, like, we're out here in space. <laughs> okay, so just Space Oddity. Just space and oddity. How about just that? Just yeah. that on repeat. <laughs> just get stuck in that song for a long time, for six hours while you play T.I. That sounds yeah. great. <laughs> um, Fred says, is Hunter the cat or the turtle? Mm, that's a big question. That's I used to think I was the cat. And now I feel like I might be the turtle. I think yeah. we switch. I think we, we in switch. In three, it was different, but we've we've flipped sides. Yeah, I think. and now Matt is aggressive. Uh, well, okay. So obviously, if we were to decide that there are only two types of TI players, we probably wouldn't pick a cat and a turtle, actually, <laughs> because <laughs> both Hakan and Extra kind of play a little a slower, almost yeah. turtley game. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're really just two types of turtles. There's a cat turtle and there's a turtle turtle. <laughs> but let's say cat means like aggressive and offensive and turtle means like defensive. Yeah. I feel like I used to be the aggressive mean boy yeah. and, and Matt was the slower guy. Mm-hmm. And then now I, in my old age, you know, cause I'm 30 now <laughs> and I'm looking cool. at my life and I'm thinking like, it's time to slow down with my play style because <laughs> the only thing important to me is this game uh so i've been slowing down and matt is who's about to have a child who you think would be slowing down he's living his life you know he's Ready going he's going fast he's yeah. fighting he's yeah. feisty um <laughs> yeah i i speak of the hakan like i i played twilight appear so many times and i'd never gotten to play the hakan just because i'm like Ooh. i was so like sags i'm like they always have so much money it's not fair and when i right. finally played them in four I, I it was bad because every single thing that happened i was trying to trade with people and yep, do like trade course. good things like every single thing is like no no no, wait 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 Let, let's yeah. trade first <laughs> like there was... is an audible groan when i pick hakan yeah i, <laughs> like, I can't from everyone in the room like oh my every God. every Every uh, point, there's like a, a stop yep. gap in the rules for you to trade some stuff and talk somebody into something. Exactly. And now it's bad for me. I got an action card for that. You want it? Come here. Hey, hand it Come on down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll trade you this. And then you do this and then do this. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. And then next round, I was like, okay, let's do it. Again. And so I don't let's know. Let's do it every bad. action. Man, I, I paired up with the Joel Nar one game and they were just giving me the thing where I could like copy text. And I yeah. just kept buying it from them over and over again. They shouldn't have let that happen. Yep. I didn't win, but they shouldn't have let that happen. All, um, Jolnar is all about spreading the wealth. You can't just feed one person. You got to keep it even. Right, right, right. right. Um, so Paul asks, which just seems like a really important question here. Uh, question for Matt: Why don't you ever win Twilight Imperium? Are you just really that? Is that bad? Paul Brown? Is yeah, that Paul, Paul Brown? Was is okay. it? It's it's unaligned magi. Hi, <laughs> I just won my fourteen point tournament game, and. I'll see you in the finals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's trying to throw down and I'm not going to have it. Hey, hey, Paul, how about you win one game without being king made? Now, oh. I know I don't get to say that because I was just king made in my last game. But right. you're like, thrice guilty. You. Three times guilty. <laughs> so He's, I won't have it. <laughs> I, I guess there's a lot of meta game in these games when you play with the same people a bunch of times. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot. Well, and and this Paul here has been around for a while, and he's been the finalist in many a tournament, actually. Uh, so we we are very familiar with him as a player and his play style, and uh, we call him the punching calculator. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you might have already answered this, but what is the longest game you've ever played? Mine was literally this last weekend, 14 and a half hours. I've come yeah. plenty close a few times, but that one broke the record for me. That's got it. That's the... Have we seen a game longer than that, though? Like in no. our turn, did in no, our tournament, nothing. nothing, past 14? nothing I think something came up to that. Something, some was games that, came. Was up it just to like the mid maxing or just negotiating at every step? It's negotiation. Of the way. Well, and especially uh, keep in mind too, our tournament is is all virtual online, mm-hmm. which means IRL you get to do the like, hey, let's you and I go talk over here, and they're going to keep doing their thing. 
But like in our tournament, like if people are gonna have a negotiation, everything crawls to a halt. It has to stop yeah. because mm-hmm. Discord communication has to happen that way. So yeah, the, the negotiation will just absolutely slow you down. Um, what would you like to see f- in the first expansion for TI four? Mm. So we did an episode about this mm-hmm. a year ago. We did a two part episode that kind of was like our whole wish list. Yeah, yeah. And I think my biggest takeaway from that episode was whatever it has, I want it to be a holistic expansion. Mm-hmm. So they've already set up with fourth edition, they got rid of all the crazy optional rules that were in third edition. And whatever they bring into it, I just don't want it to introduce a bunch of optional stuff. Like I want it to be like, you play with the uh, expansion or you don't. You know, I, it's, it's you're all you're such not. a purist. I miss the optional yeah. stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. I like I like I mean, tailoring the game the way I want to play it because I would be like, yeah. this is my streamlined version. You know, I don't know. Right. Right. Um, but also like the old. I mean, there's you could call you could talk about a ton of old TI three mechanics that everyone wants mm-hmm. to see revisited. Right. Like distant suns, the exploration. Like we talked about four X earlier, but Twilight Imperium actually kind of lacks the exploration mechanic. Mm-hmm. There's not really any right. of that thing. But they did have it at one point. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you just have to bake it in so i mean it'd be cool to have distant suns back um in a way that didn't turn the game into kind of a crazy coin flip for yeah if distant suns is back i would hope that it would have that it would be a little deeper than it was in ti3 and i'm sure it would be if it was back right um i I would like a a dog faction what about that (laughs) space dogs dogs. you see what i'm saying big french bulldogs or maybe even pugs how about that Space that bugs. Fun. Like an aristocracy race. That'd be That's really the fun. main thing I want. Yep. That's Dog it. Faction. <laughs> Space dogs. Change the name of the show. Well, space, we just add that to it. So space, it's space, space cats, cats, peace, peace turtles, 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 big dogs. Spa- <laughs> <laughs> the big Sponsored dogs. Sponsored by big dog. <laughs> um, so Leon asks, what's the best TI4 accessories? Like flight stands or Ooh. game mats or anything like that. Ooh. We have a game mat that you, you can get. I actually saw that. Buy. It's being advertised and stuff. I'm like, oh man, these yeah. guys got their own TI game mat. What? Yeah. yeah. So the best accessory, our game mat tries to accomplish this, but you can also get them for free. Just print them. Is you said this earlier, Roy, uh, that there's a five. There's a way to play fl- five player games where you pull out like one slice of the galaxy and you replace it with kind of like a like a warp line thing and there's people that have made really really cool looking versions of that design um and and the five player game plays so much better if you pop out that wedge rather than doing the like trade good method that's in the rule book so like print off yourself at least one warp zone and learn how to use it and that's like gonna get you a long way yeah. I think the most important thing is like one of those turn trackers. Yeah. You know, oh thing. yeah, that was a big deal for us initially. Is 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 yeah, like a dial or something just just to keep track of who's mm-hmm. turn who's turn it because is. Because the, the turns point. in Twilight Imperium aren't like just around the table. It's like mm-hmm. whoever picked which strategy card. And, you, and sometimes and it's so confusing and, yeah. who's where. And uh, one of my friends got like printed me out one of these for my birthday, like on a like mouse pad thing. And it's been yeah, it like takes significant time off off the game if i'm sitting there running it it's like your turn go okay cool your turn go because sometimes you're just like whose turn is it exactly you know you don't want there's cool web apps that do that too that we've found um people have designed stuff where you input everyone's information and then all you have to do is like hit next turn and it just tells you who's doing what and then you tell it like what everybody what strategy cards everyone draws so like we used to we originally would have like a physical dial and then we eventually got to where we were playing with like a tv in the background and we would just have that web app like cast up onto the TV and and someone on their phone could be clicking through it and you just see whose turn was next. Have y'all ever played like, and a it chess that... clock timer like to yeah. see who goes well, the that's... longest and so try to go as fast as possible? Has, has a little clock in the butt. You can see how long each person's turn is and you can go look at a list and you can see like, oh, hey, look, Matt took four hours over the entire course of the right. game. Looks like we know right. who not to invite next time. Hunter <laughs> took five minutes. Matt <laughs> took four hours. <laughs> that's awesome. What about you, Hunter? Is there a specific... Um, accessory that you like yeah what was the so well I would say for me personally is having a place to put all the dang stuff besides just the box <laughs> it comes with so yeah, yeah. you know tackle box style thing um, right. what was the name of that we actually walked by a really good booth at Gen Con 
last year that had a really good TI box with like little boxes inside of it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Matt? You don't remember, do you? Well, Broken Token makes a great one. I mean, oh, there's, there's lots was, of really yeah. good companies that make organizers that are, are for TI especially, uh, very, very useful. I personally like, my, my TI is outfitted with um, individual boxes for everything. So like you can get the boxes where it's like, oh, it's a grid and everything fits in there. And then you have to like pick your fingers in to try to get everything out. So I like, individual boxes of everything that I can like just dump out or, or keep in the box and easily access or whatever. So yeah, the, the there's, there's people online that like will go on for hours about the best way to organize your TI box. Um, I whether think we, it's, made, we made a video, I think there's one a, of our first videos on our YouTube is, is me showing off my copy of TI in the, in my really useful boxes. Yeah, nice. that's the brand. <laughs> that's a brand. <laughs> I hope we're sponsored by them. Thanks, Dice nice Tower. <laughs> um, Earthbat with another interesting question here. Matt, what happened to the back of your chair? Uh, Did so the space cat, cat get it? Yeah, go. The space go get cat Pat. get done got it, and I'm lazy and didn't buy. A, haven't bought a new chair <laughs> because she's just gonna do it again. So whatever. This right, is how yeah. I live. I'm about to have a child. Things are gonna get worse. So I'm not I'm not mincing dollars over this this chair. I could care less. Uh, that's awesome. Always with the uh, the crazy stuff. <laughs> Paul's upset by some of the things you said apparently Good. in the chat. Good. I'll that's just fair. Scroll right past all those. <laughs> um. Cool. Uh. What scoring um objectives would you like changed or added? Ooh, that's a Ooh. really good question. Those are two very kind of different parts that are great. So changed would be uh, the big kind of um, pain in the butt, I think, in, in TI4 is the tech objectives and how they actually restrict um, your choices in the right. game. Um, you are forced into making shallow tech paths to optimize your, mm -hmm. your ability to score points. Um, there's not enough other objectives where the tech objectives end up coming up all the time. Right. Um, so you always have to plan for it, and it means you don't get to do all like the reason you don't see cool war suns all the time, or a lot of like the really deep tech tree stuff, is because people can't afford to c give up the opportunity to score those objectives. So I would either throw those out or change the numbers on them or whatever, something to adjust the value of the of the tech objectives. Hunter, you, would you add one? Yeah, I don't know I, what if you were to add one, what could that even be though? Like yeah. most dudes, that'd be one. <laughs> most Mo most friends on the table. Yeah, most friends on the table. Um, I tri I I have more than one support for the throne. That would be funny because then it's basically three points because you had to get two to qualify. I for like it. the opposite of that. Of I broke <laughs> someone's support for the throne. Like I, oh. you had my support for the throne, and or like I had your support for the throne, and then I attacked you and gave it back to you and that scores me a point <laughs> we should explain what that is support for the throne is a point that you can literally trade to another player mm -hmm. um however if you then try and attack them they you well if they attack you if they, they have the point you, now if they attack you they lose the point right um, so it would be awesome if they could get a point out of doing that <laughs> basically <laughs> to is, replace the point they lost <laughs> is it a major yeah. faux pas to like trade support for the thrones or does it happen all the time it yeah. happens all the time. It is, it it goes through meta waves because it almost it, it, becomes it an alliance and, at that point, right? Yeah, it waxes and wanes in popularity. Uh, I am currently at a point. I used to be at a point where I was like, I need to trade that thing as fast as possible because there was a point in the meta where everyone was going to trade it eventually. So you wanted to be the first one to trade it with someone just so that you made the choice. Because what ends up happening, six player game, Hunter and I trade. Roy, you and Tom trade. Mm -hmm. Now the other two people at our table have no other option. And right. they don't get to strategize around if that's going to block any of their objectives to have that person, you know, as someone they can't attack. So you're better off right away picking someone and being like, uh, it looks like their stuff is never going to be in my way. So let me put the, the support for the throne in their hands and, and get theirs so that I just I have that point out of the way and I don't need to, right. to dig into their stuff. Um, so I, I would like round two try to do support swaps. Can can multiple people or can one person get multiple people's support? Like, has that yeah. happened? Like, oh, or is definitely. it like somebody who's super far behind that sometimes happens? Or it sometimes happens, but it's also people who are really good at getting leverage over other people. Mm. I mean, there's nothing better than the 
give me a support for the throne or I'll take out your home system. And you can sure. see that I can do it because I'm Clan Asar and I'm sitting in front of your home system <laughs> with like a million ships and a the thousand balls coming. ground forces. Yeah, there's just yeah. no way you can stop me. <laughs> or like someone had to make a sad deal because you were talking about public execution in TI3. Yeah. Uh, if that if that were to come out, then, oh, now I have to sell my support for the throne to avoid getting hit with it. You know what right. I mean? That type of thing. Yeah. Robert asks, what is the single best card, action, agenda, otherwise, in the game? Ooh, like best component. Like a okay. single card. Whoa. Like is there a card that you think is the best? Okay, well, so there's an obvious answer, which is Ixthian Artifact, which is an agenda that can come up, and it's, it's the nuke. <laughs> it's an agenda where if you vote for it, you roll a D10, and on a 6 to a 10... I might get the numbers wrong. I might get it backwards. But half the options, uh, everyone gets to research two tech. The other half mm -hmm. of the options, every single ship and unit on Mechatol Rex dies, and everything surrounding Mechatol Rex, which is at the center of the galaxy, everything surrounding that, three units in every other system dies. So it's just like, boom, the bomb yeah, goes off. It's a bomb. That is the most legendary card in TI. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I feel like that's you have to say that. But I also really love the action card rise of the messiah it is always mm. thematic when it is played and it's always something that people announce with like a different kind of fervor than they do with any other action card it's always <clears throat> i would like to rise a messiah please and everyone's like oh no and, and like they, there's just way more fanfare to that one action card than right. any other it, it just feels good to play it it's satisfying mm. uh sabotage is good it's always good to say hey that thing you wanted to do that's nope. cool you don't get to do it now. That feels good. That's kind <laughs> I of took my your energy. Fun away. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I like I like the most spiteful card in the deck. That's the one that I think is the best. <laughs> worst card, public execution. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Yeah. It's just me <laughs> personally. No, I've been worst executed card, real bad. Well, worst card, confusing legal text, which only comes up because of public execution. <laughs> yeah, that's almost like a mistake. I don't even understand why. What is the deal with that card? How could that card be fixed? I wonder. <laughs> which card Flip is it? it around. So there's a card, there's an action card called Confusing Legal Text, and it reads essentially when you are voted as the target of an agenda, mm -hmm. an elect mm -hmm. player agenda, you can send that to somebody else. You can hit somebody else with it. Oh, wow. But the whole thing is you wouldn't do that with like a good agenda. If you get elected with a good agenda, you probably just want to keep it. Right. So, OK, it only matters if it's a negative agenda right. that elects one player. Well, public execution is the only agenda in the deck that elects one player and does something negative mm -hmm. to them. So confusing legal text only works to deflect public execution. <laughs> so Which like is the, one agenda. So it's <laughs> the odds one of, card it out of 80 coming and up. then one card out of 50. <laughs> and then that has to be the person that got hit with. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. It's confusing. It's confusing. Which <laughs> might be the intention. That could be the intention, actually. That might be it. I think I just figured it out. <laughs> um, do you miss the mechs from TI3? Do I? I don't miss the mechs from TI3. I miss the idea of a mech, but mechs in TI3 were really specifically broken because of the yeah. rules of the game and how ground forces worked. Um, there were many, many cards that targeted ground forces, mm -hmm. and because of the wording, they didn't target mechanized units, which mm -hmm. meant so many cards became useless because you would just keep a mech on the planet and it wouldn't do anything. So, right. and, and lots of other rules. I mean, all kinds of things just completely fell apart. Uh, with with TI3's version of mechs. But do I want had, mechs back? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't future proof like the grammar or the language mm -hmm. of like the the core TI3 rule book essentially. Yeah. And so it created this weird hole when mech units came up. Um what would be two pieces of advice you would give to someone playing Twilight Imperium 4 for the first time? Ooh. Uh, don't don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> that's that's super useful, huh? <laughs> don't get mad, okay? Don't get whatever mad. you do, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, well, I, I, if I were to word that in a way that is nicer, I would say definitely don't try to fit the whole game in your mm -hmm. brain yep. at once. Be prepared and, to mess stuff up. Just be, yeah. and be okay with that. Be okay with messing things up because it's, you know what, it's a huge game and you can enjoy it while messing things up. If you're the kind of player who really, really like needs to do everything in an exact way, um, 
you you might need to find a way to to curb that emotion because um it, it's there's just so much going on that you just it's more about writing the thematic waves of the game than it is perfectly executing Ooh. a strategy in your first game i like that trust uh tr- like all i mean i think the art the art in ti is really good and if yeah. you pay attention to just what uh each character looks like you can kind of thematically see where you should go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you see the the cats with the shawl and what you're interested in that, go for it. That's yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Uh, the turtles are turtly. Like, yeah, just, just trust the theme to kind of guide you into doing something that you want to do. Also, I do have a second thing, which would be there actually is a podcast called Space Cats, Peace Turtles. <laughs> where they actually just talk about this game and that game only. So if and, you, and, if and they for a resource, do an entire episode on this one question. You know? yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And every other question you might have about the game, we have did, either covered did it they mention or don't worry, we're going to get 130-something episodes. Like, come yeah. on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you met or played with any celebrities? Whoa. Um, to find celebrities, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Uh, not, we had a recent no. <laughs> yeah I would say no we had a recent game where we did get to play with a prominent Hearthstone oh wait never mind I'll player. say yes no yes that he's um, a celebrity the, sort he's of. a celebrity he, uh, he plays um, Hearthstone professionally and he was a prominent part of a league in Texas like people that play Twilight he got really into Twilight Imperium in Texas oh, nice. and we played with him pretty recently it's actually on our YouTube you can see us playing with um, Trump SC um the hearthstone player yeah um, nice. but that's about it i think nice um how hardcore are you into role playing when you play the game we've been talking about man doing not like enough role playing stream yeah for really so long that. and we just haven't done it yet where we like dress up and we get all goofy about it yeah i want that so bad but yeah, yeah. I, okay. I would say not too much i i, I do go with the the theme of like my faction but yeah i wish i was a bit more role play i think i think with the right group that's the best way to play is mm-hmm. is people just living in the moment with it and having and having fun rather than like truly trying to you know make the perfect move with every single act action. i think since we started doing the tournament and yeah. like kind of cultivating a kind of competitive um element to ti uh that has kind of replaced the role playing aspect yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But I think we're going to want to return to that in a pretty significant way. I think we're yeah. both ready to, like, get goofy again. Right. <laughs> get real, we get do real a, weird. We do a Christmas uh, stream called the Holiday Spectacular um, where we generally specifically try. Well, that's not true. But the most recent one, uh, we genuinely tried to play less optimal and goofier. Um, and some of it's us. a fun. You can. Yeah, some of us did. Not everyone. Uh, Matt uh, apparently did want to win, um, and you can see that. In uh, Matt generally plays to win, and uh, I won't. I, I won't reveal what happened in the video. You should check it out. Uh, there, if you guys think if you guys think the chair he's sitting in is doing so hot, the chair. <laughs> That's you about see it. See the All other right. guy. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, so, so John had asked a question about, are you able to lie in the game? And then he also says, basically, can you lie about an alliance and then stab someone in the back? I mean, that is it's TI4. Now that's Twilight Imperium. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Please do that. Um, I mean, they're, they're, like, if we're talking on a mechanical level, there are things you can't, like, I don't know. TI is funny because it codified binding and non-binding deals mm-hmm. in the fourth edition, which is something you don't see very often, but they made a point to be like, hey, listen, when you do it in this exact moment, you don't get to break that. But you can break other stuff, so maybe <laughs> you want to break the other deal. I don't know. I don't know. Give it a try. Right. And so then you should do that often. <laughs> I mean, I think that's some of like the most memorable parts of this game yeah. is the fact right. that like those those moments when it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, there was one game I played and me and my friend were like, we're not going to cross these this line right here. These planets yeah. are your planets. <laughs> these planets are my planets. And then he like inched over he's like don't, don't worry he's like i just need this one planet i'm like dude right, right. what's going on and they inched even closer to my home world it's like yeah no stop it you know <laughs> the stops just here. those moments when you like sneak up and it's just like it's so weird because the objectives and stuff kind of put you mm-hmm. in a situation yep. where you want to be like oh yeah i mean i'm just going over here because you know i mean i'm just going over here and it's like 
you take one step closer you know they're like i said you couldn't go here you know it makes it the, so, the famous so line one of our good friends likes to to utter is well i've altered the deal <laughs> <laughs> And, and the game itself, like, puts you in those situations. It's like, yeah. oh, well, yeah. now I have an objective or an agenda or whatever right. that, like, says I need to do this. And I need right. that right. point. It's, if I'm going right. to get anywhere close to the points I need to win I wasn't going to attack that planet, but now I need four industrial planets. And that's right. an industrial planet, bud. Sorry. <laughs> and then you take the industrial planet, and it's like, well, but now I, there's the take your home, home system VP. So oh. I'm going to have to go for, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't <laughs> want to. But yeah. it just kind of one thing led to another, and now I need now I have to hurt you. I'm sorry, it's not personal. <laughs> um, h- how strict are you guys on like how open you're allowed to say things about? Do you have to keep your agendas like super private, or can you hint towards like, hey man, I'm coming here, or do you do things like, I'll I I need that place. If you move out of there and let me take yeah. that place, do you guys do deals think- like that or? I think I'm a bit more of an open player personally. Like I, I play very like I'm generally not trying to pull a fast one on you. Yeah. Um, but, but I, and so like the way it usually goes is like, Oh, I'm doing a thing. And, and someone kind of points out like, well, it looks like he's going for that third tech skip planet. And I won't just like sit there coyly in the corner. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I need the third tech skip planet. <laughs> and generally the way you can actually be sneaky in that is, be super ad- like over admit to things you're going for that should be basically obvious to put extra uh, subterfuge over the stuff that they might not see coming. Right. The thing that when you're going to pull the fast one on them, you want to have been talking up all the other stuff you're doing so that they definitely don't see the surprise coming. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, I, the game I, also reinforces that with the secret objectives as well, because there's only so yeah. much that they know about that you need right um yeah so it's and and sometimes asking for something public can lead to something secret as well right you know maybe that third tech sk- uh the third tech spec is right near their flagship and now next round you're going to attack their flagship and destroy it because that's your secret objective so there right. you go right that's awesome i'm, I'm sure you guys are deep deep do you like feign certain objectives to be like oh yeah yeah oh yeah I, I'm oh doing absolutely this. One of the best plays we ever saw, we got like so excited about it, was our first year covering a tournament at Gen Con. And there was one player in like the prelim round, mm-hmm. I think, where he had, he was doing actions where every single action he was doing was like, well, that could be that secret objective. And that could be that. And he was doing it on per, like he was, he was just, he had plenty of extra activations and he had already locked in his other point. So he started pretending to go for like six other points. So that just nobody could get a read on which one was the real one. And it was like mind blowing to see it get pulled off. It was very, very cool. Yeah. Who is the best teacher of the game and any teaching advice? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm a great teacher, uh, and it's because <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because I stay so solid. You know, I'm never yeah, I'm never yanking your chain. You know, I always shoot straight. No, um, I actually do feel like I should take the lead here though, and say that Matt is a very good teacher of this game. Um, and you have taught so many people how to Not play. A lot it. of people. Yeah. Um, on another note, too, I would give some credit to uh, the people at the YouTube channel RTFM. They have yes. like the mm. ultimate best known Twilight. It's Twilight Imperium in 32 minutes. And like it covers everything you need to know before you start your first game. So like that's the crash course video you give to anyone that you're going to have play this game like the week before. I mean, generally, you know, you're going to play Twilight Imperium at least a week in advance, mm. usually more. So sometimes it's like, hey, we're going right. to play in august it's like requirement for you to be at this game day to play this game watch this video watch the video so right so that rtfm video is is legendary um so very 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 good i I highly recommend that's usually like a part of the process of learning games like watch the video and then when you get there we'll walk through everything again and make sure we've like retained everything have you ever played diplomacy you already said you played game of thrones Mm mm-hmm I played diplomacy only once, ever. Honestly. I used to have a group in high school where we would play diplomacy like every week for a little while. But honestly, I think at that time, 
I probably didn't even really think about diplomacy on a very high level at all. I was probably yeah. just doing goofy, stupid stuff. I, I think all I really remember of diplomacy was I liked that everyone wrote down what they did right. and then showed it to each other. And that's also pretty much all I remember of the game mechanically as far as how it works. So I was probably a really I was probably really bad at it and probably not very fun to play with because I probably just did stupid stuff all I the time. I was very bad at it. I played at Gen Con 2014. And that was the first and only time I've ever played it. And we played with a group of, I mean, you can imagine who shows up to Gen Con to play Diplomacy. They're ready yeah. to throw down. Oh, for sure. And me and my <laughs> idiot friend joined the group and probably ruined the game for everyone else in a very, like... <laughs> Austria Hungary does not. You're. What are you doing? Why would you, that's that the mo, That's not what you do. And just so yeah, definitely not a good <laughs> diplomacy player. How old should a player be before you try to teach them Twilight Imperium Four? Twelve? Forty? <laughs> <laughs> um. No one is old enough. No. One, <laughs> no one's prepared. <laughs> the impossible game. Uh. No, yeah, there's. I don't think there's necessarily too young. I don't know what the box says, but the, the like real answer is you start at twelve and you right. end the game at forty. You figure it out at forty. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You've that's only but, but it's only it. one game. One try. game the whole time. Your whole life. Every What's day. The, is the one Malcolm action. Gladwell ten thousand hours is real easy with Twilight Imperium. It's about it's four so games easy. and you've mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about that before. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, I, I guess Matt, you'll be figuring that out, seeing that you have. I'll find, yeah, I'll let you know. Give me, give me twelve years, and I'll have the answer for you. <laughs> Whatever. I'll let They're you gonna know be playing at, at three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's see. Any other crazy questions here? Do do do. Let's see if we can end on a good one because we're pretty much out of time. Um. Cool. Uh. What is the funniest homebrew variant idea that you have seen? Ooh. All right, yeah. let's talk about Nuzlocke. Oh, is that Philroy? Yeah, Philroy. Oh, Philroy. Oh. Philroy is the is the curator of the tabletop simulator Twilight Imperium Discord. Huge shout out to Philroy and all the yeah. amazing work he does for the community. He's amazing. Uh, funniest homebrew. Um, Are we not going to talk about Nuzlocke? We should talk about Nuzlocke. We should talk about Nuz Okay, we should talk about two. We should talk about Franken and we should talk about Nuzlocke. Oh, right. Nuzlocke is an actual joke that our friend uh, EJ came up with. Uh, if you know Pokemon very well, you might have heard of Nuzlocke. That's where if your Pokemon faints, it's dead. It's gone. You don't have that Pokemon anymore. Uh, so po uh, Twilight Imperium and Nuzlocke is the same thing with all of your ships. When Ooh. your ship dies, you don't get it back. You throw it away you in the garbage. Uh, there's a bunch of other really stupid arbitrary rules in Nuzlocke that don't make any sense. Um but it's the honestly, actual... it's like a legacy game where you're it ripping is. all the components up as you mm -hmm. play. That's right. what it is. Except well, with that's everything like that you can in do War of the Ring, the bad guys get their units back over and over oh, and over yes, again. Yes, yes, right, right. And, the, and yeah. the good guys, if a unit dies, you don't get that's any more of that unit. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the correct answer for people who don't know what Frankendraft is, Frankendraft started off as a joke, but is now like a huge part of the <laughs> online scene. These insane people took every single component every ability everything that exists uh in twilight imperium and they Related broke it to up your faction that is uh, uh, so yes. every uh, like your every commodities, faction element yeah mm -hmm. so yeah. You, like i have four commodities i have this ability i have this ability i have this flagship i have this promissory note they took all of those things broke them up into individual pieces shuffled them up into bags and then you draft frankenstein monster factions at the start of the game so you have a faction that has like Jolnar's starting tech with Barony's starting fleet with the Asaril home system and the ability to do Hakan's trading action cards as well as Yin Brotherhood's devotion. Like, you just, you get these absolute monstrosities. Do you get to name your faction factions. after you're done? Of yeah, course. Well, that's what, of course. Yeah, you absolutely are required to name your new faction. Uh, and usually it's way more fun to draft and then when you get to the playing of the game there's one person that's just like oh they're about to steamroll us because they got like this crazy <laughs> combo mm -hmm. and the game's done in like four hours and it's like okay right. cool that was fine <laughs> that's awesome that sounds like uh both of those together sound like the uh the basis for twilight yeah. Imperium legacy right there <laughs> right there you <laughs> go. Nuzlocke, done twilight legacy <laughs> Awesome. Well, I guess we'll wrap this thing up. Um, everybody, make sure to check out Hunter and Matt on their podcast. Um, if people want to find it, where can they find out more from you guys? 
So you can find us on Twitter uh, at Space Cats Pod. Uh, our podcast is on all podcast uh, apps. You can uh, find it Space Cats Peace Turtles. There's no comma. There's no ampersand. There's no and. It's just mm-hmm. Space Cats Peace Turtles. Uh, you up. can find us on Facebook. We have a Discord community that's really great. Um, and, and you should come be a part of it if you want to find games or if you want to talk Twilight Imperium or Root or kind of anything. There's, there's a lot going on. And you guys do tons of games uh, remotely through tabletop simulators. So. We do, especially, I mean, obviously nowadays, but but we, we were um, kind of already pretty active with tabletop simulator before just based on how much easier it is to do Twilight Imperium there. And since uh, since COVID, we're, we're hitting up even more stuff. Hunter basically streams about four days a week. Yeah. Um, and that's generally a root and a couple Twilight Imperium games per week. That's yeah, crazy. generally Twilight Imperium is on Saturday and Sunday. I'll generally start around like 10 a.m. Pacific mm-hmm. uh, and play a game every single weekend, baby. That's two <laughs> a weekend. Can hit them up, and maybe you can break the 14-hour record and just go for that yes. 16. <laughs> yeah, that's my goal. I want to play. I want to play seamlessly from Saturday morning till Sunday night. Through you Sunday. know what I mean? Yeah. No break, <laughs> <laughs> except for the pizza face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to happen. That's got to happen. Awesome, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks, everybody, who asked questions in the chat. Y'all are the best. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.